It's like a mini hand massage. Not very sanitary though, I don't recommend that. Today we're gonna talk about all different kinds of juicing, from squeezing a couple lemons for a recipe to bringing the whole juice bar home. From citrus juicers to electric fruit and vegetable juicers to have you ever heard of a blucer? We've got a full rundown of all kinds of juicing gear so you can decide which is best for you. First up, Lisa. So today I'm gonna to talk about electric fruit and vegetable juicers. Juicing at home gives you so much more control over the ingredients that you put in it. It saves you so much money from going out and buying juice from juice bars. And you know, it's much more convenient than buying pre-made juice, but only if you have the right juicer. So there are two styles of electric juicers, centrifugal and masticating. And those terms refer to how they actually process the food into juice. We tested nine different models. We processed over 95 pounds of produce before we came up with our winners in each category. So we have something to offer you if you prefer a centrifugal or a masticating juicer. This is our favorite centrifugal juicer. It's by Breville. It's the Revel Juice Fountain Cold. Cold refers to the fact that it is designed to not to heat up the produce while it's processing, and that's gonna keep more of the nutrients intact. What they do is it chops and then it spins and that forces the juice out through a screen, a metal screen, and into this juice pitcher. And on this side, you get squeezed out spent produce. So this is a big bin for pulp and this will be the pitcher for the juice. And it's nice because it hooks right on here and you can pull this off and serve from it. It closes for storage. Although you really should drink all fresh juice within a day or two. You wanna have it when it's freshest. That's when it tastes best. It's not really meant to like juice a gallon of stuff and keep it all week. Let's show you a little bit about how this works. This model has a pitcher that comes off. It's a big clear pitcher with markings for the measurements. This bar keeps you from operating it when it's not fully closed, so it's a safety measure. There's a feed tube. It's kind of like a food processor, a feed tube, a hopper where it's actually getting processed. Juice comes out here, pulp comes out here, and gets collected in this big bin. What you wanna do in every case is use this juicer in a way that will get the most juice out of your produce. With a few tips, you get a really good result with this juicer or with any centrifugal juicer in general. So first, there's two speeds, low and high. Depending on the kind of food you're putting in, you wanna choose low or high. So low speed for things that are softer, that need more time to stay in the hopper and get processed. High speed for hard produce like carrots or beets or something that's really going to need to be forced through. The other thing you need to know is how to prepare the food to go in this hopper. One nice thing about centrifugal juicers like this one, three inch feed tube, very wide. You could put a whole apple in there if it fits. Although we really think you should core apples in pairs and take the seeds out because a little bit of seeds are okay. They won't go into your juice, but there are some toxins in those seeds for apples and pears that you don't want if you're doing this every day and you're drinking it with the seeds in. Not such a great idea. It's centrifugal juicing. The bigger the pieces, the better, and that will help it process. So size matters. Okay, so I'm going to juice some kale. And the other thing you wanna know is you don't wanna chop this up and put it in little pieces, and you don't wanna put it in one leaf at a time. You're actually gonna take this stuff and make it into as tight a bundle as you can. So you can roll it up or bunch it up and really pack it so that it will go through and I'm gonna stick it in the feed tube, and get it ready. So now there's a rule of thumb in layering ingredients when you're adding different things, if you're gonna do a mixed juice. You wanna put the lighter things on the bottom, heavier things on top, it weighs them down. I'm gonna start processing this on low speed. This has really large, simple parts. It's fairly simple to clean. Really big bonus, because if you're gonna use this, you really want it to not be a big pain to clean. This is a masticating juicer. It's the Omega Vertical Juicer. And masticating is another word for chewing. So this is what it does. It has little gears that grind and chew the food up. And the pulp comes out dry as dust. I put an apple through here, and being me, I go ahead and taste the pulp. It was like a wood chip. It had no flavor. It was red, like you could see where the skin had been, but no flavor. Masticating is considered kind of the high end 
of juicers because it is really able to extract every last drip of juice out of any kind of produce you put in here. And it has one speed. It takes a little more preparation before you put things in. This feed tube is one of the biggest ones. Well, you can see by the pusher, it's a couple inches across and maybe an inch wide. This has one of the biggest feed tubes in the masticating world. It's not as big as that big wide feed tube that you saw on the centrifugal juicer. There's two directions. It's on or reverse. Reverse is good if you just want to send the grinding gears in the other direction in case anything's getting stuck. This is the pulp collecting bin and this is the juice collecting carafe. And here we go. This one by Omega is a vertical style. Sometimes you see these on a horizontal style. And sometimes they're called slow juicers because they are slower. They're not whipping the produce around. Supposedly that keeps the food a little cooler. We didn't really find that to be the case with our winning centrifugal juicer because it is designed to keep the food cold. One of the things that I like is that it is pretty carefree. Whatever you can put down that feed tube, it can chew up and turn into juice. And it gave us the best yield of all the masticating and centrifugal juicers. So the Omega juicer, the vertical juicer, we love it. It's wonderful. Maybe not be for everyone because of the price tag, but it certainly does the job and does a beautiful job. Now, last but not least, Drum roll, please. The Blucer. Yeah, we laugh every time we say that because it's kind of such a silly name, but it's kind of an interesting product. It is a base with a juicer and a blender. So blender, juicer, blucer. Here is the portion with the screen and the blades, pulp bin on the bottom, juicer on top, lock it down gigantic feed tube, just like the Juice Fountain Cold. I think the advantage of this one is that it has our favorite mid-price blender and our favorite centrifugal juicer kind of in one. You can have a little fun with this thing. I'm gonna put, um, let's put some carrots in. So now you know all about electric fruit and vegetable juicers. Let's go to Hannah for some information on citrus juicers. All right, so Lisa just covered the bigger juicers that can juice all kinds of fruits and vegetables. Today, I'm going to focus on citrus juicers. And within this category, there are two styles. There's manual ones and there's electric. So there were three kinds of manual reamers. The first and most simple is the little wooden dowel. Very easy to clean, very simple, one piece. It did not yield that much juice. You know, it was like around 30% less than other models, so forget it. The ones where you press down on the tabletop, these were a little easier to use because you could use the weight of your body and force down, but they had a lot of parts and they were pain to clean, so forget those. Finally, the third style, which was our favorite, the press style. I have our winner right here, the Chef in Fresh Force, and it uses the help of physics to make it easier to squeeze out every last drop of juice, the most in our lineup, and it also held back bits. You see these long, skinny slots right here? They quickly drained away juice while holding back all the seeds and stuff you don't want in your juice. It's easy to clean too, it's just one piece, and we definitely loved this above all of the rest and all the other styles. All right, I'm gonna show you how the Chef and works. I'm gonna start with a lemon. I like to cut the little butt end off to get even more juice out. You know, it's interesting. They say a lot of things about lemons and limes, like microwave them or roll them on the counter to try to get the most possible juice out. So we tested this, you know, we tested lemons that were rolled on the counter, those that were microwaved and warmed up a little bit to those that were cold from the fridge. And it was true that the ones that were cold from the fridge, they had the same amount of juice, but it was harder to get it out. And that's where one of these things can really be your friend. You don't have to worry about rolling the citrus or microwaving it or any of that. This is strong enough and makes it easy enough to get the juice out with lemons that are cold right from the fridge. All right, let's see how this thing works. You can of course squeeze a lemon or lime by hand, but the juice sprays everywhere and the seeds can get in whenever you're trying to make. That's why manual citrus juicers are easier and tidier to use. The next category I wanna talk about is electric citrus juicers. I have two of them in front of me right here. These are great for when you want a little more juice, like if you wanna make a big batch of lemonade, a big batch of margaritas, all of this sounds wonderful and these can be great for that. I tested these in the kitchen and let me just say I did not make any friends. Some of them, the whining pitch was so annoying. It's just like, oh, you just cannot hear that first thing in the morning. We definitely preferred models that were 
quieter. Another thing that really mattered was juice extraction. If they're not that good at getting out juice, what's the point? It often came down to reamer design. This is the reamer, the thing that bores into the fruit to extract the juice as it turns. And some of them just weren't designed that well. They were dull or flat and just not effective. Here are two winners. And as you can see, they are both reasonably pointed. The shape really mattered. They were much better at evenly scraping out every last bit of juice. Okay, so I have our two winners right in front of me here. I'll start over here with the Breville. This is our high-end winner. It has all the luxury options. This little spout, you can push it up and push it down so it won't drip juice on your counter. This is the luxury model. If you love juicing, if you juice every morning, this might be the model for you. But we also have a less expensive option over here, the Dash. It's made of plastic, but you know, it's smaller, so you can store it away. The Dash really punched above its weight at juice extraction. It did a great job of getting out every last drop, you know, so it really performed well. All right, let me show you how these things work. I'm gonna start with the Breville over here, the luxury option. <laughs> All right, so you can see that was fairly easy. I was sitting here chit-chatting, doing it with a finger. Um, we're all done now. I don't want this to drip on my counter, so I'm gonna put that like that. And look how much juice we got. It's just shy of a cup, one orange, one grapefruit. And that was super easy. This really is the luxury option. If you love juicing citrus, this is the model for you. But let's go over here to the Dash because I also have a soft place in my heart for the Dash. <laughs> Mm. Oh, it's, it's absolutely delicious. So fresh and light, worlds better than the store-bought stuff. If you are interested in making juice at home, whether fruit and vegetables like the machines that Lisa showed or citrus like what I showed, one of these machines might be right for you. Cheers. For more information on all the gear we talked about, check out the links below. Yes, and please ask us your juicing questions in the comments. Make sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button.